being aware of how obsessed people are with you as a black woman in an interracial relationship is important because people will treat you differently and they'll tell you that they're not. So people will gaslight you and abuse you in a cycle because they're telling you, no, I'm not. Because people expect you to be at the bottom of society. If black people are at the bottom of society, who's at the bottom of that? It's the dark skinned black woman. So this is a duck breast with asparagus, chicken neck meat. Our restaurants are number one for the skewers. Chicken oyster, but chicken thigh is very juicy bird. This is the meatball, and here the today's special grill. So we have A5 grade Japanese wagyu beef steak and langa sting. This is the Iberico pork from Spain. Hi. So, do we choose which one? Or? No, no, no. It's all you oh, they're all. Hi. <laughs> oh, okay, great. Yeah. Tiffany, 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 It's a kinky, uh, which is a channel rock fish. A dip. Uh, so this is the uh, two kinds of the tuna. Red part, and this is the chu toro, uh, medium fat. So please uh, enjoy the taste of taste of the different. Okay. So last one. So this is the hotaruika, which is a uh, baby firefly squid. Underneath, uh, vinegar, uh, egg yolk sauce, and scallion. So please enjoy the good fish first, and this uh, soy sauce for the sashimi. Mm. Thank you. Daikon radish, refreshment. Enjoy also much with the sun show. Chicken, we store out of time. Yes. Main artery. I love these dishes, they're so cool and unique. Look at that. Look at that. Mm, mm, mm. What is tofu? Tofu? It's a, uh, do you know the like white, like soft? Made from the soybeans. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. Soy. Like, Tofu is so. Okay. Like. And that. Hi, mm -hmm. hey, this is that. Uh, Ama o. Actually, I'm always from my home, that's Fukuoka. Fukuoka. Oh, yeah. So for this year, you're ready to make it. Okay. So please put on your side of the plate. Let's talk about the hypervisibility of Black women in interracial relationships. Now, I think that this is a very important topic to talk about. If you're talking about interracial dating and relationships and marriage and hypergamy and all of that. I've seen a few women talk about it. I don't remember their points too much, but I do remember me wanting to speak on it as a 
black woman, a dark skinned black woman who is in a hypergamous interracial marriage. Okay. Do I feel immense hyper visibility as a black woman in an interracial relationship? Yeah, I kind of do. I really feel like people didn't really pay much attention to me until I got with my husband. And don't get me wrong, guys hit on me, but nothing serious. You know, they got really mad when Jody said, you know, black men didn't hit on me. And they're like, yes, we did, bitch. We just didn't care. <laughs> or something like that right but it's like you don't know her experience like she clearly went to private school from the uniform so i'm sure there wasn't a lot of black guys there and like when you go to private school which i have i went to private school kindergarten to 12th grade also for grad school i guess you know the, the program that i was in was a private school but anyways there's very few black guys in private school okay there's usually more black girls than black guys when you're at a private school. I went to a private Catholic school as well. So even less, right? And then like, you're not their automatic choice. Black guys in PWI don't say, oh, I better hook up with a black woman. That does not happen from my vast experience in, on the subject matter. So I can't speak for growing up in black communities and going to predominantly black schools because I didn't go to predominantly black schools. I grew up in the hood, I grew up in poor neighborhoods, if you know anything about Rochester. Uh, it's a tough hood to grow up in, just to be honest. So I spent most of my time at school, thank God. <laughs> and obviously I wanted to because I was in foster care, which is uh, oxymoron because nobody actually cares when you're in foster care. I'm in foster care, I don't want to go home. I don't want to be in those environments. So I spent a lot of time in school as much time in school as I could. Even for me, I'm around these blocks. I'm block, suburban black people who are from different parts of the diaspora, whose parents are telling them, don't be hanging out with those African-American kids. Everybody knows that that is what happens. And or suburban block American kids who thought they were better than me because their parents were married and I was in foster care. Classism is real. So while I was asked out seriously a few times, neither one of those times was when I was ready to date. I am a late bloomer. I was not ready to date in high school, even most of undergrad because of what I saw growing up. My mother had five kids and we were shamed in her place. If she wasn't there to get the, the burden of the shame, they made sure to let us know. Ugh. Huffs and sighs and comments that kids aren't stupid and they pick up on. And my mother was married, but the uh, drug epidemic at the time, that shit didn't really matter. So people are constantly staring at me, particularly when I'm with my husband. If I have natural hair, no makeup, they stare. And I think a lot of that is because he's very pale. <laughs> he is definitely not what you guys would call a wigger. Oh, hold on, door. Doorbell ring, it's my new Ugg slippers. Maybe I'll show you guys. Yeah, my husband kind of presents very kind of European, I guess. And I say that because when we have been to Europe, Europeans think he's European and Europeans here in America have also assumed that he is European. Uh, I think it's just a lot to do with that he has blue green eyes and he doesn't tan. <laughs> so he's not like what people would call a wigger, okay? Um, he, he doesn't seek to imitate black culture or black behavior because that's not how he grew up. He grew up in the suburbs and he didn't really know a lot of black people until he went to college and met a boss bitch like me. So, <laughs> so if I'm in my more natural state, people are like, what's going on? I think that's when they're particularly curious when we're together. Because when I'm kind of done up like this, I think people just assume, oh, she's a gold digger. So of course she'd be with him, right? We're in New York, so black guys, white guys, all, all different types of guys will make comments, right? They'll be like, oh, get your money. They say all types of things because they can't control themselves, right? They see us together and they wanna assume that it's some gold digging situation when, as I've explained to you guys a billion times, we met in undergrad, we started dating when we were both in grad school. And so if you know anything about being in grad school, straight out undergrad, you would know that nobody has a lot of money in that situation. So I'm just being honest. Now, where the hypergamy comes into play is 
you know, and I think one of the reasons why his mom doesn't like me is, of course, I knew he would make a lot of money because of what he was doing in college. So there's the difference. But he didn't have a lot of money for years when I met him. Okay, so let's be clear. It's not a gold digger situation if you sat up there and built up and worked with to make something come true. Sorry, but it's not. And you've been working hard, just as hard on your own the entire time as well, okay? So I just recently started to, you know, be able to take a little bit more of a break when it comes to having to do a lot of hustle and flow jobs. And that honestly has more to do with just needing a mental break. I mean, am I taken care of now? Yeah, <laughs> that's the goal. Not to be playing yourself for years and decades on end. That's, that's not a goal of mine, so. In terms of women, I had one black woman in particular, I'll never forget, Ken and I were at the park walking our dog. It was a lot of people there and majorly white people. And we're walking our dog and a black woman with a group of black people comes up to me. And I feel like she only did this because she's with a group of black people and trying to be funny, dude. Ken was wearing one of his Superman t-shirts because he's my Superman and, and he's my Clark Kent. Well, he's mostly my Clark Kent, but <laughs> he's Superman too. So he was wearing a Superman shirt, which is a theme that I have for him. So I get him a lot of Superman themed things. So he's wearing a Superman t-shirt, walking through the park. This black woman with a group of other black people approaches and she's like, you with Superman? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, ah, ha, 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 oh, oh. And who are you with? You're with a bunch of other black women. So, okay. There was like one black guy in your group of people. So y'all sharing? What's up? Anyways, I definitely feel like she was trying to be a funny dude with that. One of the times that I met up with my cousin, and this is not any shade to him, you know, I'm not, I'm not feeling any type of way. I'm just pointing out what he did. He was like, Danny, a white guy? Really? When I'd never dated anyone before and brought anyone around. What do you mean, really? What the fuck y'all thought was going to happen? I was about to be struggling? Fuck. Anyways, uh, when he's married to a white Hispanic woman, they want to make little funny comments and shit about it as well. And it's like, why are y'all so focused on my interracial relationship, marriage, that I've been in consistently for 10 years, but y'all have all dated, been with, been best friends with, chased around white people. They all sit up here and hate on interracial marriage and dating, and that's fine, but then you should be trying to scoop up black women left and right every which way you can if you feel so fucking strongly when one's not with you. It's really that simple. People's behavior speaks for themselves. You know, I've lost friendships and I feel like people just wanted me to constantly be in this place in my life where I was constantly struggling. And so I had the mentality of somebody that's constantly struggling. And unfortunately, you know, like I can't give you that. <laughs> Sorry. As life improves, my opinions improve for myself. And I'm not gonna lie about that. And I never have. I feel like people don't like who I am when I'm not a poor black girl trying to get their approval. In terms of going to restaurants and things like that, I definitely feel like people are always watching us. It's annoying. I've had white women particularly just stare at us like all dinner long. It's taken a lot of dealing with that to be like, what are you doing? or cut it out, or ask the waitress, something's gotta be done. Me and my husband, we go out all the time. I have my natural hair, I have no makeup on, it is what it is. He didn't get all dolled up neither. You know, we're going out, we're walking in the park, whatever. We like to go to fancy dinners, as I show you guys, because I love fancy dinners. Ken would eat anywhere, he'd eat at a diner, he'd eat, you know. Um, so sorry he got a girl that's bougie, because I don't eat at diners. I don't like diner food. I don't like diner ambiance. That's for kids and young people. When we were younger, people would just shout stuff at us all the time. Like some old white guy when we were walking in the park was like, you got a little too done up. Like, bitch, I don't need your opinion at all. Nowadays, people don't really do that. Thank God, I think people understand. Like if you talk to me, I'm cussing you out. I don't have the patience and I don't give a fuck. And if you wanna put it on YouTube, make sure you tag Danny Steele, kiss my ass. I'm thankful I don't have to deal with that now, but that's one of the reasons why I've been saying over and over again, like y'all not ready for these interracial relationships. It doesn't have anything to do with me thinking I'm better or, you know, um, thinking that I somehow can deal with it, but you guys can't. It has only to do with, as I've said in um, my videos on interracial dating, which you should go back and listen to. It has only to do with the fact that I grew up around a lot of different people. I grew up around white people my whole life. 
people that had a lot of money. And the royal family treated Meghan better than my husband's family treated me. And that was a shock to me. That was a shock to be vilified, to work as hard as I do. Trying to kiss their ass wasn't good enough. I remember one of the first times I met her, her, that she had the Christmas tree up and I had been assaulted. I had just came back home from being assaulted. And I was like, wow, such a beautiful Christmas tree. It was a big, beautiful tree that she doesn't deserve. And I was like, wow, what a beautiful Christmas tree. And she was like, eh, thank you. Eh. My husband comes around to me like 10 minutes later and he's like, oh, my mom doesn't think that you were like being sincere about the Christmas tree. She thinks that you were like, lying and putting on bitch i just met you and you're talking to him about what you think i'm putting on and he told me all your secrets too so i don't know why y'all keep okay you know what let me stop i just met you and you're talking to him about what you think is a put on and i was assaulted i had like a, a scarred face and that is the energy that's the loving mother nurturing energy that you gave me you racist so that's why i say don't deal with it unfortunately i didn't know how to deal with it at the time and so I just did. Of course, being aware of the constant looks and all of that, you know, you feel like, okay, well I have to. We never are loud at dinner. And most of the times people that are loud are older white women that are drunk at the bar. I'm just being honest, you know, old parties of white people. They're loud and stuff at bars, but they will tell you, oh, if they hear noise, it's a black person. Um, not where I eat. Not where I eat, not the Michelin star restaurants and five star, four star restaurants that I eat at. It's not black people when they're laughing and cackling and being loud and being disrespectful to the guests. When I go out with my husband, we go to an event, you know, we've been to the gala at the Met, his work parties, whatever it is. I'm very cognizant that as a black woman, I have to present a certain way for people to not automatically judge me extremely harsh but the reality is they're probably gonna do that anyway which is why i stuck to just being myself you know and i know that people hate to hear that because it's like that doesn't really help me to like get the man i want and do what i want to do but like i think it does if you're a dark skinned black woman and you're winning to them that means the system's not working and i feel like i've kind of messed up their idea of what should be happening because they've been told that they're better than me their whole lives sorry but you're not, <laughs> okay? And the first time I heard I was beautiful was in undergrad after I left my hometown. I was in a PWI. That was the first time that I heard I was beautiful. Dudes trying to sleep with you, that's not shit. That's not them trying to be with you, date you, take care of you. I can take care of myself. So if I'm gonna be with a man, he's gotta bring something to the table. You understand? Because I'm the five course meal. <laughs> okay. All right, see you guys next time. Bye.